Hello everyone, welcome to the Fortress of Bad Gaming Decisions, where today we are doing a PS Plus Essential and Premium Wrap-Up. How did September hold up? I bet you're wondering. Because I'm wondering too, as always, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and let's get on with this, right? So, first game we have up is Toem, right? I thought Toem was a really fun game, really easy to play and i thought it was super fun it's actually still my playstation i'm actually planning on playing it more often on my downtime not something that i want to make content out of but hey it's still a fun game and it's really relaxing and i truly enjoyed it because i like these kind of indie games so i highly recommend grabbing this before the time's up then next up we have i believe need for speed heat now this game brings me back to memories i definitely enjoyed it i thought it gave me underground vibes need for speed underground back in the day underground 2 with all the customizations in the car the racing was phenomenal the handling was pretty good um it's just your typical need for speed game you know you start from the ground up and you work your way up through races earning money and the formula hasn't really changed you get chased by cops and that adds a little bit of thing to it but other than that i mean it's your normal need for speed game and i truly enjoyed it for what it was and just a normal racing game um, if i had another controller i'd probably keep it and play with it with my daughter and my girlfriend and probably end up racing on split screen um that's what i would personally probably do but we all can't win so this is the one where i was like i still recommend grabbing it if you want it if you like it i definitely highly recommend it's definitely a gem even though it came out a while ago, it's definitely a gem. So highly recommendable. So this is a PS Plus Essential. So as if you just have the basic PS Plus, what well, used to be the old PS Plus, is these two games you get. And then this third game is Grand Blue Fantasy. Um, this game, I didn't choose a really good main. So I'm Azeroth, the guy, the, the guy with the big scythe, and obviously the little, the little, the little person, the little guy. That the king destroyed me. Has better combos and parries. I didn't actually give this game time to learn and cop. Um, really learn the combos for mostly because it probably takes a lot of time and the servers aren't good. I think I fought this same character like five or six times. Like the same guy, I fought him four times in rank because we were just on the same ranking. So I mean, that's I would get it. It's not something that I would invest heavily into or try to become the best in because it's probably not worth your time. But another good gem, another good gem of a PlayStation Plus essential game. Um, highly recommend it. I think it's totally worth it and should be played, but not as a main. Don't replace it for another fighting game. Then we have a PS Plus premium or extra game rayman legends this game i miss rayman so much and this was a blast to go back to childhood and bring back to dreamcast days of playing it and enjoying it now this game is a little sus this game is alex the kid right and this game let me tell you this game was a little sus because It's old school, at SNES, right? It's old school. So I'm playing in the DX version, which is the updated version that came out in 2021. It plays fun, and it's something that I could see being an arcade game and playing fun in my downtime. But in the long run, it's a grand scheme of thing, I probably wouldn't play this game too much just because it is rather frustrating. You only get three lives, and you die really easily. It gets really annoying how fast you die and how arrogant you die. So, so far, for the PS Plus Essential Games, right, we have the three games I talked about. Tellum, Need for Speed, Grand Blue Fantasy, right? Then, for PS Premium, so far, we have Alex the Kid, which is this game right here, which... Uh, this is... I thought this, this was pretty cool with the Rock, Paper, Scissors. I thought that was a pretty unique mechanism in the game. And then the rest of the game, just a 2D side-scrolling game, which you just run back and forth. Um, 2D scroller. So I thought that was pretty cool. Overall, though, I lost to the guy in that giant seat. I'm going to start all the way to being good again. Ah, oh, see, game over. It's just such a tough game. Such a tough game. But I did get back to him, and I did win. Next up is Chicory, A Colorful Tale. This was a unique game, and I definitely could see me and Amir playing it. I definitely recommend, if you're a PS Plus or Extra member, scooping this up. Uh, it's definitely 
a gem and it's a nice another nice indie game really been feeling indie games lately and then next up we have the big one of the the big one of the month death loop right this game was bonkers this game is bonkers I'm actually making a new death loop series where i will be playing death loop until i beat it I'm trying to get all secret endings apparently there's a bunch of them so stay tuned for that the original video will be up on the top right of your screen so overall i really so far enjoy this game it's another roguelike game like returnal or hades or dead cells or risk of rain but with a really good narrative and a really cool concept where you could protect the loop or destroy the loop and the combat's pretty cool for being first person game look at me macheting people and blowing people up with my shotgun Ooh, oh oh wow oh. blowing them up blowing them up I really enjoy the combat and the, the, the death loop, and I haven't even got to the part where I get cool abilities and stuff like that, but I so far enjoy it a lot. It's definitely staying on my console, and I'll be making a series, so stay tuned as always, but this is definitely a gem. If you haven't actually bought this game, but you're a PS Plus Extra or a Central Premium member, I definitely recommend downloading it, especially after the Golden Loop update that just passed. They bounced a lot of things out that wasn't bounced out before on multiplayer and balancing and stuff like that. So I highly recommend picking it up. Definitely something worth playing and playing with others. And you can also play with people. Play with your play against people or play against people or with people. I haven't figured that part out because I'm trying to do solo mode, but I'll get back to you and update on multiplayer mode eventually. Ooh, we're killing it so far in this review. Next up is Spirit Bearer. If you are looking for a Stardew Valley, a new Stardew Valley to throw yourself into, this is the game. You are the new spirit guide of the boats of the river of the, not, the dead. And you get this nice little boat, you collect your spirits, which happen to be your family members, and you got to harvest on the boat, build things on the boat, go to different islands, get different resources. It's really fun, but yet relaxing. Because when you're on the boat, you can just fish, and then there's thunderstorms, catch lightning. It's it's a, it's a whole nine. This game is definitely staying on my PlayStation. It's something I'm going to end up playing, making more videos out of, because I personally love Stardew Valley. And I read about this game a long time ago, and I was like, oh, man. I hope it comes out for consoles. Totally forgot it existed. Boop disappeared never bought it and then i saw it was available on ps plus didn't actually youtube it until i played the game i was like oh this is the game that i saw so long ago so highly recommend picking this up if you're a stardew valley life sim fan definitely worth the time and it's also super beautiful to look at so you get to be looking at beautiful the mecha mechanics are super easy and it's a fun game and then next we have so the ps premium catalog has been growing right the classic catalog i guess right now it's jack and daxter uh precursor legacy i have it um they seem to have a lot of classic stuff in it so far i'm going to make a series out of those as well but right now we're just trying to be jack and daxter one into the next two and three and then i'm probably going to do sly cooper which just dropped this month for whenever i get to that um so overall i I think this month held up really well. It had a lot of good releases and a lot of good stuff. Um, so I think that overall, the general of this month was there were a lot of good games that were released. And this is one of the better months for games besides maybe July when they released Stray. But other than that, I mean, August was a little uh, iffy um, with the games they released. But this month is definitely the month of the, the good game. So we'll have to see what October holds. Because as you know, Halloween's around the corner. So maybe we'll get some good games. I'm um, not too optimistic about it. But hey. You now it is what it is. As you can see, the videos that I've just started playing right now are all my series I play. So we have Hades. We have Cult of the Lamb. We have the Returnal series. Which I should be closing soon. Should almost be done with it. Should almost be done with it. And then Warframe. Right. So as always, everyone, I appreciate you for staying tuned for my wise review. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and stay wise, everyone, until my next video and then my next month wrap up. I hope everyone stays wise. Enjoy the rest of your time. 
Thank you for joining the Fortress of Bad Gaming Decisions.